This video is going to be about how to troubleshoot a sonar issue with a uh, fish finder where you're getting no depth or, or poor depth readings. Um, so what I've got here is a Lowrance HDS-8 and everything is working on this unit. I'm just going to do some things to simulate the issues. Um, so, you know, we'll just say you get out on the water and you find that uh, your, your depth is either uh, three bars or it's just flashing and uh, you get no sonar chart reading. The first thing you're going to want to do is take a look at the top bar here. If you're getting this surface clutter still, generally that will indicate that the unit is still sending a signal out. If you're not getting anything like that or just a, a very, very thin yellow line up at the top, chances are that's a problem with the unit and not the transducer. Um, you know, it still could be the transdu transducer, but that's, uh, that's most likely what's wrong. So in this case, we have surface clutter up here. So you know, to me, uh, seeing this right now and leaning towards a transducer issue. Um, what we can do to confirm that and the, the easiest thing we can do is just plug another unit into this source. So I'm going to grab my unit from the bow and plug that into the back. They're the same connections and we'll see what results we get. Okay, so I've gone ahead, connected up this HDS-5, and we have the same results. So like I suspect, it is a transducer issue. Um, two units and on one transducer, and uh, that's probably the problem. Now, most people would stop here. What I'd recommend you do is go ahead and take the unit that you had here, the HDS-8, and plug it into the transducer on the bow of the boat, and then that'll 100% verify that it is a transducer issue if that unit fails on you. Or sorry, if that unit does work. It's one of the nice things about the Lowrance units, just about everything from the LCX series, LMS series, HDS series, um, you know, whether it's Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3, touch or non-touch, they all use the same transducer and power connection. And that's going back to units, you know, that came out first in 2001. So, you know, just about any unit you have or a friend's unit you have that you can borrow will work with your existing setup. Um, some of the units that use the uniplug connector, which the power and transducer are in one connector, that will not work. Uh, you will have to have a unit that uses that connector. But like I say, LMS, LCX, and HDS will all plug into each other. Okay, so now let's say I've plugged this unit in and everything's working fine. I'm getting a depth reading, I'm getting bottom reading, everything there is working, uh, no issues whatsoever. It's giving me a good strong return. So that would now indicate that I have a problem with the um, with the the unit itself and not actually the transducer. So that could be a few things. It could be settings. Um, it could also be the um, the transformer in the unit that sends power to the transducer. Um, so just an internal problem is what I'm getting at there. So if it is an internal problem, the unit would have to go in and, and be serviced. Now, if you don't have a unit on the front of your boat to where you can swap the units around. If you can borrow a unit, that's great. Um, another thing you can try is if you want to just try another transducer on your unit is if you have an ice fishing kit or um, anything like that or maybe a portable kit, you can try that transducer. Bring it out with you and just hang it over the side. You don't have to fish it through. Okay, so settings wise, first thing to check is to just see if you have stop chart on your screen. You know, you'd be surprised how common this is. You come down to stop chart, you turn that off, and then your sonar starts to scroll through. The stop chart feature is just designed when you go up to the front of the boat to fish. You can turn this one off. You know, we're in about 30 feet of water, so I can just hit stop chart in the menu, turn the sonar off, you see stopped on the screen. It stops pinging, so it won't interfere with my bow unit. So that would be the first thing to check if you, if you think it might be a settings issue. Okay, next thing to check, if you are getting a depth reading, but no sonar chart, chances are, you don't have it in auto sensitivity and you can see auto sensitivity is not checked off. So if we go to adjust, sensitivity is down at 35%. We can just increase that up till we start to get a reading, you know, back to a, an area where we get a, a good solid reading. Now, if you have two units on your boat, uh, one on the bow where you have a transducer on the trolling motor and then, you know, a second unit at the uh, helm or at the tiller, um, which the transducers on the back of the boat. One problem you can have when they're networked together with an ethernet cable is the sonar source. So if you come into your menu and you see sonar source HDS5, so this is actually reading the transducer that's on my trolling motor right now, and the trolling motor is out of the water, so I'm obviously not gonna get a reading. If I, if I come and change the source back to this unit, 
I got my sonar reading again. Now my recommendation is if you do have two units Ethernet connected together, come into your menu under sonar and uncheck network sonar. So that will then only allow this unit to read its transducer and the bow unit to read its transducer. Now if you had two units at one station where their ethernet connected together, you may want to share the transducer so you'd have to turn that feature back on. So those are the basic checks you can do to see if you have a hardware issue with your unit um, to see you know if you're getting no depth whatsoever. If you are getting depth and you're just losing bottom, let's now take a look at some of those things that could possibly cause that issue. It's one common issue when you uh, have a good depth reading at uh, idle speed, like we're just moving along here slowly, and I'm gonna put the boat up on plane, and you'll see I'm gonna lose depth. Okay, and then as we come off plane, we get depth again. Now that's gonna be something we're gonna have to pull the boat out of the water to check. So we'll do that now. Okay, so we have the boat out of the water here. And um, what you can see is the transducer's kicked up really high. So when you have the flow of water coming over it, it's not giving you a reading. Um, when you're at rest, this is obviously underwater. So it would give you a false reading because it's sending it down that way. Um, so what you need to do is just click it back. In this case, the transducer was too loose. So what I've done is just gone and tightened that up a bit so that it, it stays steady in that socket. You should have to put a fair bit of pressure for it to ratchet in its mechanism there. So that could be one thing, a loose transducer um, that would cause your issue. Um, the other thing, if your transducer is not installed at the right height, this line here, I like to have that line flush with the bottom of the hull. So we've got about a quarter inch of the transducer below the bottom of the hull. So as water comes up, it's always in, in the flow of water. Now, what you can also do is if you're losing it at speed and it's, it's um, level, take it in one notch. And in this case, this is a, a little bit too dramatic, but just to, to give you the idea, you're gonna have then a cleaner flow of water come over this, it'll plow through the water and tend to give you a bit better reading. Another thing that can cause issues with your transducer is your transducer location. And what I mean by that is its location in regards to these ribs and strikes or rows of rivets. So you can see where this transducer was originally installed. It's a terrible spot because it was right in front of the strake running up the boat with all the rivets. It's going to cause a lot of turbulence and give you an issue um, when you have uh, you know, water that's full of air bubbles coming off the hull. So what I've done is gone and relocated it. I've centered it as much as I could between those two strikes. And this, this area here is one of the best, the cleanest. Um, and you also want to note it's on the starboard side. So to the right of the um, prop, when your prop is rotating clockwise, it'll push water on top of this rather than up underneath it. So this transducer that I have mounted over there tends to, to lose bottom um, when we're running at higher speeds just because the, the prop is shooting water up under it. Okay, so now in this case we've lost our digital depth reading, but we still have a bottom reading. Um, so a few things can cause that. The first thing, uh, definitely check your transducer, make sure you have no weeds on it because it's possible that that could cause the issue. Eventually, this probably will come back. Um, you can see the sonar is kind of moving in stages. Um, one thing you can do, uh, we've got weedy bottom here. If we go into our, our menu, change it from general use to shallow water. Now that just totally adjusted my uh, depth range. I'm just gonna have to go back and change that to 15 back where I was and see if that brings it back. Uh, a lot of the times the unit will perform a lot better in shallow water mode. Okay, so now in shallow water mode, the digital depth number has come back. Now if you are having issues with it losing depth, you think it might be a setting issue, what I'd recommend you do is just go to system and then restore defaults. Um, if you check off your waypoints and trails, those will be deleted. So just make sure they're not checked off. Hit enter, that'll restart everything back to factory settings. Just gonna go ahead and turn the speaker off. 
Okay, so one thing you will run into, um, and just because we've gone back to factory settings, we're in automatic, auto range, auto sensitivity. I'm not in two feet of water, I know that. Um, the top of the weeds might be in two feet, but you know, two and a half feet is, is not what I'm in. My depth range is zero to five, so my transducer is actually locking onto something that's not the true bottom. So what I would recommend you do, um, if you have this issue, or if you have an issue where your depth locks up at like 2.1, um, 2.2, something like that. See, so you can see now we're back onto the to the bottom, and it's it's scrolling much better. Um, so if you have either of those two issues, put it in manual mode. Turn off auto sensitivity. Come down to your range. Turn that off as well. Go to advanced and turn on manual mode. This will now limit where the the unit will search, um, and you'll you'll eliminate an issue where you may just have the unit getting confused in the automatic mode like that you can now limit it it won't get confused anymore so as you can see we're coming into some weeds we've got our true bottom just beyond six feet and we we are actually getting a good bottom reading your digital depth number may still um, change but your actual bottom reading will not so you'll, you'll be able to use the fish finder to more of its potential and see even here Digital depth is still staying. We're going over some weeds that come up to just under four feet, but we still have a, a strong bottom return. So that's one of the benefits to using the manual mode.